In this screencast video lecture, we are going to see about the importance of algae there in the soil system. More than 50 genera of eukaryotic algae have been commonly identified there in the biological soil crust. Here is the meaning for biological soil crust. They are all community of organisms living at the surface of the soil in a range of environments. This includes deserts to temperate climates. So, the organisms which are commonly come across in this biological soil crust include cyanobacteria, green algae, microfungi, mosses and liverworts. Thus, algae refers to eukaryotic organisms found associated there with the wet margins of the rivers, lakes, ponds and peat containing soils. They do not thrive on removing them from the water. So, such kind of algae are technically referred as a hydroterrestrial algae. The next group is a edaphic algae. They are commonly present in diverse soils from temperate to tropical agricultural soils, grasslands, forests, arctic, alpine, tundra and even in the desert ecosystem. They harbor a diverse flora of eukaryotic algae and cyanobacteria were also commonly associated with them. This kind of algae that have been present there in the land regions are commonly referred as a edaphic algae. The third one is a cryptobiotic crust. So, this is a kind of a biological soil crust like thing which is not easily visible and it is formed by eukaryotic algae and other filamentous fungi, yeast and cyanobacteria. Next, we look at into the salient features of the algae. So, algae are all basically eukaryotic in nature. They are unicellular, sometimes colonial in which they will be found, sometimes filamentous, even multicellular forms are seen to existing. Mainly the brown algae are multicellular in nature and some are xenocytic. Xenocytic refers to free distribution of the nucleus there inside the mycelium without any septa presence. Some algae found to form cell aggregates and they are embedded there in the mucilaginous layers. In some group of algae, the cell wall is made up of a thick polysaccharide layer which is mainly consists of pectin, cellulose, sometimes even they are calcified that is calcium carbonate is added, sometimes silicified meaning silica is added there. So, Silica or calcium are get embedded there in their cell wall. Algae generally possess the chlorophyll. That is the reason why they are all the grassroot level photosynthetic organism living in any kind of ecosystem. Thus, they can be able to fix carbon dioxide into cell carbon. Their reproduction is mainly mediated by two means that is sexually or asexually and a distinct alteration of generation that is a asexual followed by sexual generations are commonly visible in the algae. Now, we look at into the points related to green algae. Green algae is an important soil algae. It can be present in soil, sometimes even the snow, even the bark of the plants. They have been evolved some 900 million years before. They can be of a unicellular, colonial or filamentous in nature. They are commonly associated there in the soil biological crust along with the cyanobacteria. Apart from that, they are also found associated as an important partner there with the fungi in the lichens. Now, we look at some points related to dominating green algae that have been present in various environments. The first one is a filamentous green algae that is Zygogonium ericitorum, which commonly occurs there in the soil and rock crust along with the cyanobacteria. They are present usually in the environments such as tropic as well as the boreal regions. So, this is the kind of a green algae that have been dominating there in the boreal regions along with the cyanobacteria. The next one is a green algae that is dominating there in the soil crust which belongs to the group Clubsormidium. They were found in disturbed soils of the forest areas and sand dunes in the Europe regions. Often they have been found together with the other algae that is xanthophytic group of algae named Tribodema. 
The next is a list of eukaryotic algal genera that have been commonly come across there in the soils. This includes genera such as Chlamydomonas, Chlorella, Chlorococcum, Coccomyxa, Stichococcus, Clepsorbidium, which we have seen earlier, Keratococcus, Protosiphon, Desmococcus, and Eulothrix. And a unicellular green algae named Neochloris was regularly identified there in the soil crust belong to dry thorn bush savanna regions present in South Africa. The next important green algae that have been commonly present there associated with the plant bark is Trentifolia. So this is the appearance of the Trentifolia there in the tree bark. They form brilliant orange filaments on the soil free rocks and commonly present in the barks also. The numerous multiplication of the spores of this trentifolia has caused a phenomena there called as a red rain there in Kerala region, even there in the Sri Lankan region. So this red rain is caused mainly by the spores of this particular algae that have been deposited into the cloud and they will again reach back into the soil as a red rain or it is referred as a blood drain also. In general, soil is a common habitat for non motile green algae. Both the filamentous as well as the coccoid forms will be occurring there. Mainly, the coccoid forms will occur in the desert region. The next important algae present there in the soil is the red algae. They are infrequent in typical soils. However, Certain red algae are dominating. For example, cyanidium was found in and around the acidic hot springs. So, this species will be growing along with the other groups of cyanobacteria and the species of porphyridium forming into a reddish gelatinous mass encrusting in the polluted environments, mainly in a ammonia rich soils. And they are commonly present in the shaded areas and in the wet as well as well decayed log regions. Both these algae are spherical unicellular and they will be commonly having a mucilaginous matrix. The next important group of algae in the soil is a golden green algae that belongs to xanthophyta and the other one is a basilarophyta that is diatoms. First, we look at the points related to golden green algae. These algae are commonly present in the surface of moist soils. They will be having a vegetative cells that are generally non motile and exhibit a variety of growth forms that is from unicellular and globose or cylindrical to colonial and xenocytic filamentous organisms. The common genera of Golden green algae reported in soil includes Botridiopsis, Botridium, Bumiliria, Heterococcus, Ocheria, and Xanthonema. Next, we look at the diatoms that belongs to Basiliariophyta. Diatoms are commonly showing a beautiful exoskeleton that have been deposited there with silica. So, this silica that forms into the exoskeleton that is frustules forms over a million of years in the sea that results in the formation of diatomaceous earth. This diatomaceous earth is used as a filter in microbiological work. Apart from that, they serve as a natural insecticides. Apart from sea or ocean environment, diatoms can also be come across in the freshwater ecosystems. They occur primarily in a neutral to slightly alkaline soils and their population can reach even up to 10 power 5 cells per gram of dry weight of the soil. Some common members of the diatoms that can be come across there in the soil includes Cymbella, Fragularia, Navicula, Pinularia, Surirella. You can able to see the shapes of the different kinds of soil occurring diatoms which can be easily seen using microscope. Finally, we look at into the importance of algae there in the soil. In the tropical soils, if you look at, algae plays an important role there in maintaining soil fertility. Their main function there in the soil is fixation of atmospheric carbon dioxide into cell carbon. 
Thus, it adds a lot of organic matter there to the soil. When the algae grows and dies, they increases the amount of organic carbon there in the soil. Thus, in an ecosystem, at a grassroot level, they play the role of producer. The next point is, soil algae acts as a cementing agent in binding the soil particles and thereby reducing or preventing the soil erosion. The soil algae found to have a lot of mucilage around them that gives a lot of moisture there, that is hygroscopic in nature, which helps in increasing the water retention capacity of the soil for a longer time period. And the next point is, during the course of photosynthesis, that is conversion of atmospheric carbon dioxide to cell carbon, a lot of oxygen has been evolved. So, this oxygen is the one which facilitate the aeration for the submerged soil or they involve in the oxygenation of the soil environment. The next point is related to reducing the nitrogen loss mainly in the uncropped soils. That is, presence of algae minimizes the loss of nitrates as well as leaching and drainage of the nitrate source from the soil. And the last point is related to how they help in building the soil structure. As algae grows, they produce a lot of acids and other metabolites that helps in withering the rocks. 